Welcome back to HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast. Hi, everyone. All right, so today we're going to be taking a deep dive into some HIV vaccine research and uh, some really cool stuff coming out of Oregon Health and Science University. Yeah, it's really exciting research. It sounds like it could be really uh, groundbreaking. Yeah, it is. It was uh, published in Science Immunology recently, and... Um, Basically, it's a it's a new way of thinking about vaccine development. Oh, wow! Okay. Not just for HIV, but potentially for cancer and malaria too. So this could be a triple threat. Yeah. Okay, so let's rewind a little bit. What is the big problem with developing a HIV vaccine in the first place? HIV is a really really tricky virus. It's um, it's very good at evading the immune system. Oh, okay. Uh, one of the ways it does that is it it constantly changes its appearance. Oh, wow. So it makes it very difficult for the body to mount an effective immune response against it. So it's like a moving target. Exactly. That's also changing how it looks. Exactly. Uh -huh. So it's very difficult to pin it down. Got it. And that's where this new research comes in. Um, the team at OHSU are exploring a really unique approach Go. using a common virus called cytomegalovirus. CMV. CMV. Isn't that something that most people have? Yeah, it's very, very common. And they don't even know they have it. Most people don't have symptoms, no. So how can that be used to fight HIV? Well, that's what's so ingenious about it. Okay. Um, the researchers have been working with a, a version of CMV that's found in primates. Okay. Called rhesus CMV or RH CMV. Okay. And uh, their previous research showed that this RHCMV can trigger a really, really powerful T cell response in primates. Okay, now remind me, what are T cells? I mean, I know what they are, but for the listeners, sure. why are they so important? T cells are a type of white blood cell right. that um, are really important for fighting off infection. Um, they can recognize and kill infected cells. Okay. Um, and they're really... They're really like the the elite special forces of the immune system. Okay. So they're really good at what they do. Okay. So the researchers found that this RHCMV can trigger a really powerful T cell response against HIV in primates. So they're basically training these T cells to go after HIV. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But there was a twist. Oh no. They discovered that certain genes in this RHCMV need to be turned off in order for the vaccine to be effective. Oh, really? Yeah, it's as if these genes were acting like saboteurs. Oh, wow. Undermining the immune response. So they had to reprogram the virus to make it work. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So it's really, it's really remarkable. So that was the first step? But what was the next step? So that's just the first piece of the puzzle. The real challenge was translating those findings from RHCMV to the human version of CMV. Okay. Human CMV or HCMV. And why is that so hard? Well, you're basically trying to rewrite a computer program in a different language. Okay. So it's a very complex process. Right. Um, so how do they do it? So they had to figure out which genes in the human CMV were having the same effect. Uh. So it was really a, a high stakes game of genetic detective work. Okay. So they, they inserted 41 HCMV specific genes into RHCMV one by one. Oh, wow. And then they tested each modified virus okay. in private. So 41 different viruses. Exactly. Ooh. To see which one was interfering with the vaccine's effectiveness. So they're trying to find the culprit. Exactly. Hiding in plain sight. And they found it. They did. A gene called UL18. UL18. So what's so special about UL18? Well, UL18 seems to interact with the T cells. Okay in a way that prevents them from being reprogrammed to effectively target HIV. Oh, so it's like it's like a roadblock. Exactly. That's preventing the T cells from attacking the virus. Exactly. So they found this roadblock. Yeah. Can they remove it? They can. Okay. So now they can design an hcmv based HIV vaccine that specifically excludes UL18. Oh, wow. And this is a major breakthrough because it could potentially unlock a whole new level of immune response against HIV. Okay, so this is clearly a huge step for HIV vaccine development. But you mentioned at the beginning that this could also have implications for cancer and malaria. Yes. So how does this CMV platform work for other diseases? So the principle is the same. Okay. You're harnessing the power of the immune system okay. to target and destroy whatever is causing the disease. Okay. Um, so in the case of cancer, for example, right. the challenge is to train the immune system yeah. to recognize and attack cancer cells without harming healthy cells. Yeah, that's tricky. Yeah, it's very delicate. You don't want to be killing healthy cells. No, you don't. At the same time. 
Um, and it turns out that this type of T cell response that's triggered by this modified CMV platform right. is really, really promising. Okay. It all comes down to something called antigens. Antigens. Yeah. Remind me what an antigen is. Sure. Again, for our listeners. Think of an antigen as a like a unique fingerprint. Okay. that identifies different cells. So cancer cells have their own specific antigens. Okay. And researchers believe that they can engineer CMV-based vaccines right. to target those cancer-specific antigens. Okay. So it's like giving the immune system a set of personalized instructions. Oh, wow, that's incredible. On how to identify and eliminate the cancer cells. Okay, so that's... What about malaria? How could it work for that? So malaria is caused by a parasite. Right not a virus or a cancerous cell. Right. So it's a different kind of foe. Right. But the principle is the same. Okay. Researchers are exploring the use of this CMV platform okay. to target proteins that are essential for the malaria parasite survival. So it's like disrupting the enemy supply lines. Exactly. Or, you know, taking out their weapons. Yeah. So they can't function. Exactly. Okay. So by targeting these essential proteins, mm -hmm. the vaccine could potentially weaken or even eradicate the parasite altogether. Exactly. So we've talked about HIV, we've talked about cancer, we've talked mm -hmm. about malaria. This is amazing. It sounds like we're talking about a whole new era of medicine where we can reprogram the very building blocks of life to fight disease. It really is a revolutionary concept. Yeah. And it all stems from our growing understanding of viral biology. Right. And the intricate workings of the immune system. This is incredible. Yeah, it is. I feel like we've just scratched the surface here. Oh, absolutely. There's so much more to unpack. There is. Well, let's keep digging. Okay. Let's take it a little bit deeper. There's a lot to be excited about with this research. You know, it's not just about the science itself, but what it could mean for people around the world. Yeah, I want to talk about that for a second. So let's talk about the real world impact. What could this discovery mean for people living with HIV today? Well, for those living with HIV, the development of an effective vaccine could be absolutely life-changing. Yeah. You know, current treatments manage the virus, but they require lifelong adherence to medication. Right. And they can sometimes have side effects. Yeah. A vaccine could offer a path towards a cure or at least long-term protection. Right. Without the need for daily pills. I mean, you can't really overstate how much hope that would give people, oh, absolute okay. lens of people. Yeah. And then what about those at risk of contracting HIV? That's another really crucial aspect. Yeah. A vaccine could be a game changer for prevention. Right. Especially in areas where access to testing treatment and preventative measures like pre-HOP are limited. Yeah, it's clearly got global implications, this yeah. research. But let's be realistic here. How long do you think it'll be before we actually see an HIV vaccine based on this research available to the public. It's tough to give a definitive timeline. Yeah. You know, the scientific research is a complex process. Right. But the fact that human trials are already underway oh, wow. is a very positive sign. Okay. It means that researchers are confident in the potential of this approach. So it's not just like a pipe dream. It's like there's actually some real momentum here. Exactly. And the discovery of this UL18 gene right. has significantly accelerated the timeline. That's good. That's encouraging. Yeah. Okay, so let's switch gears for a minute and talk about cancer and malaria again. Okay. So we've talked about how this CMV platform could work in theory. Yeah. What are the biggest challenges in actually applying it to those diseases? Well, with cancer. Yeah. One of the biggest hurdles is making sure the immune system only attacks the cancer cells. Right. And leaves the healthy cells alone. Right. You don't want to be you know, wiping out healthy cells exactly. along with the cancerous cells. Right. It's like trying to surgically remove a tumor yeah. without damaging the surrounding tissue. I gotcha. It requires incredible precision. Yeah, I bet that's really difficult to do. It is. What about malaria? What are the challenges there? So malaria is tricky because it's caused by a parasite. Right. Not a virus or a cancer cell. Yeah. So the approach has to be tailored. To the unique biology of that parasite. Okay. One of the challenges is identifying which parasite proteins are the most vulnerable. 
Okay. And essential for its survival. Okay, so you have to find the Achilles heel. Exactly. Of the parasite. Who got it. And then engineer the CMV-based vaccine to exploit that. Exactly. Okay. That's the challenge. Okay, so we're talking about manipulating viruses at a genetic level. Yeah. Isn't that kind of risky? It's a valid concern. Yeah. And it's why safety is paramount in all stages of uh -huh. this research. Yeah. You know, scientists are constantly evaluating potential risks okay. and taking steps to mitigate them. Right. They're working with highly specialized viruses yeah. that are designed to target specific cells gotcha. and minimize any off-target effects. So it's a calculated risk. Yes. But one that's being taken very seriously. Absolutely. Because the potential benefits are so huge. Yeah, the potential benefits are so significant right. that it's worth exploring this avenue Yeah. with careful consideration of course and rigorous safety protocols it sounds like we're on the verge of a major turning point in medicine it does feel that way you know this research could completely change how we approach disease prevention and treatment i completely agree it's a very exciting time yeah to be following these advancements who knows what the future holds yeah I know, I'm eager to find out. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered the science, we've covered the challenges, the potential. Yeah. But I want to bring it back to our listener for a moment. Okay. Why should they care about this research? How could it impact their lives? That's a great question. Yeah. This research has the potential to impact everyone. Yeah, I agree. Think about the people you love mm. who might be affected by HIV cancer or malaria. Right. Imagine a world where those diseases no longer pose a threat. Yeah. That's the future. It's a beautiful thought. That this research is striving toward. Yeah, it's not just about, you know, abstract scientific concepts. Right. It's about improving people's lives and creating a healthier world. Exactly. And it's something we can all be hopeful for. It is. Yeah. It's definitely given me a lot to think about. Okay. Um, I want to touch on something that we, we briefly mentioned before. Okay. The ethical considerations surrounding this type of research. Yeah. We're talking about manipulating viruses at a genetic level. Right. It's powerful technology. It is. How do we ensure that this power is used responsibly? That's a crucial point. Yeah. It's essential to have open and transparent dialogue about the ethical implications of this type of research. Okay. We need scientists, policymakers, ethicists, and the public okay. to work together to establish clear guidelines gotcha. and ensure responsible development and application. It's almost like a framework for responsible innovation exactly. in this field. We need to consider not just the scientific possibilities, but also the, the societal impact right. and potential risks. Yeah, of course. It's about finding the right balance between progress and responsibility. It's a great point. Okay, so. We're really getting into some future stuff here, but right. let's bring it back down to Earth for a second. Okay. You know, we've talked about the CMV platform. Right. And its potential for HIV, cancer, malaria, you know, all these things. Right. If you had to pick one, yeah. where do you think this research could have the most immediate impact? That's a tough one to pick because I'm sure a lot of scientists are tackling each of these areas yeah. with equal fervor. But if I had to choose one, I'd say the HIV vaccine holds the most near-term promise. Okay, why is that? Well, for one, the research is already pretty advanced. Okay. Remember, human trials for an HCMV-based HIV vaccine without that UL18 gene are already underway. Yeah, that's true. I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, it's easy to get with all this other stuff. Swept up in the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah. But those trials are a crucial step. Yeah. towards a potential breakthrough. So we could actually see potentially an effective HIV vaccine within our lifetime. In our lifetime. It's certainly a possibility. Wow. And if that happens, it would be a truly monumental achievement. It would be huge. Not just for science, but for humanity. Yeah, I agree. As a whole. Okay, so let's say this HIV vaccine is successful. Yeah. What happens next? What other doors could this open? If this approach proves to be effective against HIV, it could really pave the way for a whole new generation of vaccines. Right. Not just for viruses, but for other really challenging diseases like cancer. Right and parasitic infections. So it's almost like a blueprint for tackling some of the world's most persistent health threats. Exactly. We could see vaccines that target specific types of cancer, oh, wow. preventing them from developing in the first place, or vaccines that can effectively eradicate parasitic diseases like malaria, oh, well. saving millions of lives. This is almost hard to wrap my head around. It is pretty remarkable. All the possibilities, you know, 
it sounds like we're talking about a paradigm shift. It is. In how we approach disease prevention and treatment. A paradigm shift. Wow. We're moving away from a reactive approach. Right. Treating diseases after they occur to a proactive approach, preventing them altogether. This CMV platform is like the Swiss Army knife of vaccines. It is pretty remarkable. It can do so many things right. or potentially do so many things. Yeah, and it all goes back to this fundamental idea of harnessing the power of viruses right. to fight disease. Yeah. It was once a radical concept, Yeah. but now it's at the forefront of medical research. And it all started with a group of scientists who dared to think differently. It did. To see the potential yeah. in something that other people might have just overlooked. That's the beauty of scientific discovery. Yeah. It often comes from those unexpected places, yeah. from those who are willing to challenge conventional wisdom right. and explore uncharted territories. I love that. Okay, so as we wrap up this deep dive, what is the one thing you want our listener to take away from all of this? I hope they come away with a sense of optimism and excitement for the future of medicine. Yeah. We're really on the cusp of a new era. I agree. One where we can control and even eradicate diseases that have plagued humanity for centuries. It's definitely a future worth striving for, Will said. Yeah, it's an exciting time. And to our listener, thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Yes, thank you. Into the world of scientific discovery. It's fascinating. We hope you've learned something new and feel inspired by the power of human ingenuity yeah. to solve some of the world's greatest challenges. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and never stop learning. Great advice. There's a whole universe of knowledge out there. That's right. Waiting to be discovered.